six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here with the new Kubota MX Series tractors, the MX6000 and the MX5400. These are two long-awaited models, this cab here in particular. I'm going to walk you around here a little bit and show you what new features are on these new MX Series tractors. Kubota's product line is almost frustratingly complicated. It can be really difficult to know the different placement of each one of these tractors. Anything that has an X in it is kind of meant to be a bridge model between different kind of sizes or series of machines. If you look at the MX series, it's meant to be that bridge between what is a large compact tractor and a full-on farm utility oriented machine. So, Compact features in terms of hydrostatic transmission, comfortable to operate, easy to get onto, but having enough meat and enough mass to it to be able to do some of that utility type work. The prior models in the MX series before today had been the MX4700, which was the kind of the economy model out of the bunch, and then also the 5200 and 5800. The alignment of these models have changed now a little bit. So rather than having three, there's now two. So there's now an MX5400 and an MX6000. The deluxe and standard has changed in there as well. So where that old MX4800 was a little bit cheaper of a model, um, and the, the other ones were gonna come in with deluxe three-point hitches and stuff, that now varies on the two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive selection in these things. You can actually get these tractors in two-wheel drive. It's a pretty uncommon thing to find on the market anymore. When you choose that two-wheel drive option, you're also gonna get cheaper hitches and stuff on the back, where these four-wheel drive variants are gonna come through with the deluxe three points. The engine under the hood of these tractors has not changed from the older series, it's the same V2403 series engine is the other MX's were coming in at 2.4 liters. The model numbers on these tractors always are gonna correlate something to the engine horsepower. So a couple weeks ago, I did another video on the differences between the different ratings of engine horsepower. The engine horsepower that Kubota uses in the model numbers are the net engine horsepower. That's the engine's horsepower with its air cleaners and radiators and everything attached to it actually operating in this tractor. Some of the other tractor companies out there use the gross engine horsepower rating in their model numbers, and that's gonna be the one that's on a test stand, not kind of your real world number. Do know if you're going through and comparing makes of tractors, don't use the horsepower off the model number to make that comparison. You're apt to choose the wrong one, so make sure you're choosing the right option. That MX6000, for instance, is gonna come in just a shade under 60 horsepower in the engine sitting there in the tractor, but if you took that gross number, you could actually advertise 63 and a half horsepower. Operator preferences for tractor features varies dramatically around the United States. Here in Pennsylvania, in the Northeast, we tend to sell 90% cab tractors once we get up above the 50, 60 horsepower mark and move into utility machines. Very few open station machines are sold. Tends to be because of our relatively hot summers or snowy winters. Um, and the overall price point of the machine, when you start to get up into a machine that costs $40,000, $50,000, the added expense for a cab isn't all that great comparative to the overall package of what you're buying. So we've wanted a cab for this machine for a long time because it's a size that we generally would want one in. The MX is gonna give us now a cab tractor that has checks kind of the right boxes for a lot of utilitarian tasks. This machine shares a lot more in common with the smaller Grand L series than it does with the bigger M series utility machine. So when we go around the cab here and you look at its physical dimensions, its features, its functions, it's much more L than it is M. Um, so keep that in mind. The cab structure here itself, being that this is kind of an economy-oriented tractor, is gonna lack a couple of things. You see here, there's tabs up here on the top of the cab structure. There are no outside mirrors here. They are optional. An interior one is standard equipment. You're still gonna have this thing come through with halogen work lights, uh, pre-wired for radio, all of your lighting safety indicators and everything on the back. So there's a couple little things here that have cheapened that up, but it, it mostly boils down to those mirrors and to this latch. Um, oddly enough, I can get into the left-hand side of the tractor. I can't get into the right. I don't have the latch here in order to open it from the outside, but I do have one on the interior. So you'll pick up on some really little things like that, uh, where they, they've done a couple of cost-saving measures in order to keep this kind of economy feel to this machine and hold that price point down. 
My favorite thing about the MX tractors compared to the Grandels um, is the front tires that are on these. So you can tell this utility oriented tractor is a little bit more stout in a couple of areas. These awesome, really wide, beefy front R4s are a great example of that. The hitch in the rear is the other one. It's a category two rear end where all of your smaller L series tractors, your L4701 and your smaller Grandels are all category one. The exception to that would be the L6060. That's a very deluxe machine, electronic hydrostatic transmissions in it, and a very deluxe three-point hitch on the rear. So a maddening amount of options here and exactly how you wanna kind of configure your tractor. But this now gives us this factory cab option in this economy 5060 horse machine. So there are four areas on this tractor that kind of make it an economy machine that are things that I think as a buyer would be worth looking at the optional kits to kind of overcome some of the places they've cheapened it a little bit. So something that Kubota's done on some other models before, the L3560 being one of them, where they take away some really inexpensive options, but really drop the price significantly. And you can add those options back on again to kind of bring that feature level back up, but at a really affordable price point. The three places that I would consider doing that on this tractor would be the lack of the side mirrors up here at the top. Now, great, if you're working in the woods, you probably don't want to buy them, but plugging those guys back up on here again would kind of give you that better rearward look. Um, on the door itself, you're missing the one latch that would be on the right-hand side. On the loader, you're missing the leveling rod. This is just a $70 kit right here that gives you that visual of exactly where your bucket is at. And on the interior of the cab, the armrests on the seat. So those four little things right there, probably at an expense of less than $300 or so, would feature this tractor back up again to where a lot of the other machines may be. Okay, so we're going for a drive in the new Kubota MX-6000. New tractor videos are my favorite ones to do. So like we said earlier, when you're driving around in this, um, this is quite a bit different tractor than the L60 series are. So, Kubota's product line is way too complex um, and it's really difficult to navigate through if you're just kind of coming at this as a consumer. Uh, the MX series tractors really has more in common with the L series below it than it does with the M series above, right? So, when we're driving this machine around, more inside of here operationally that's more like an L series tractor than it is like an M. So we have a hydrostatic transmission and uh, you know, no clutching gears and support, deluxe cab, a little bit more comfort oriented. Uh, the MX series is usually looked at more as a utility type tractor. And so they do some things on here to help hold the price point down. The most annoying to which to be here is the lack of armrests. Even sitting here with my hand on the loader stick, um, I'd really prefer to have that back here on my arm. Now that's an available kit, but oftentimes when you go and you pop in one of these things at the dealership, all those kits aren't installed on the tractor. And so when you flop down at this thing, it makes it feel a little bit more cheap than what it really necessarily is. Um, simply because they didn't include that as standard equipment. Um, and our rest kit is cheap as it is. I would have personally liked to see in here. Yes, they did not. So easy enough to add, right? Two screws in the back of the seat. The holes are already there and for it. It's easy enough to put on, but why on a tractor of this caliber you need to have an optional arm rest kit? I don't quite understand. So I run the reds up the whole way. Cab noise is a little bit higher than the Grand L series are, uh, just audibly to my ear. It's well within the range that you don't need to be wearing hearing protection. You want to watch that on some of these tractors when you add cabs to them, particularly the aftermarkets. The in cab noise is actually fairly high, but this is a lot quieter than the open station model. Should, shouldn't need to worry about like, hearing protection or anything like that, even with that engine screaming. It's loud, but not too loud. If I come down just 400 RPM, down to like 21,200, that makes a really significant difference in the noise level, and that's where you're going to be if you're doing your loader work. There is a mirror in this tractor uh, that's only inside. Uh, the outside mirrors, again, are optional on this model, but an inside one here is standard equipment. 
They nicely put that up in the corner. Um, a lot of these tractors you'll see will come through will have mirrors across the center. That blocks your visibility in the motor when it goes up and down. So this one's tucked over here in the corner and it has a wide enough bevel to it. But I have a really good visibility out behind me. So if I had an implement or something back there, I've got a really nice shot. And that's actually a little bit nicer than what those corner outside mirrors sometimes are. I mean, an outside mirror, when you go back and look at your implement, you're really only going to see one side of it because you kind of can't see through the cab. Uh, but this one up here in the corner, I can see out my back window really easily. So like with a rotary cutter or something like that, that's going to give me a nice perspective there. The seat in this is a spring seat from the factory. You turn the big down here between your legs to change how bouncy it is. The cushioning itself in the seat is not super flush. It's a little on the firm side. And that will help it last longer, uh, but doesn't do a whole lot in order for the seat itself to give you a cushioned ride. You're relying on that spring suspension. If you're in another place, there's an air ride kit that you can put in this that's going to give it a really deluxe, nice seat. Um, that would be an optional thing. I probably, most of the time, would go with these with the standard seat. Those are dealer installed options that you can really put on anytime you want really no advantage to getting one of those from the factory. Even with the added weight of the cab on this tractor, uh, I can pull high range up a hill and pull along just fine. And sometimes you'll notice on these bigger tractors, when you have a big hydrostatic, it starts to get a little heavy. Um, the transmission start to feel a little bit sluggish because of the overall weight of the machine. The, uh, the big TLVs are that way. If you look at like the M62 and that kind of stuff. Now that's got the electronic hydrostat in it that helps overcome some of that disadvantage. But when you start getting heavy hydrostatics and you pull hills and high range, you'll start to notice a dog down. This has plenty of horsepower to overcome that. So I could bury this thing here to the floor in high range and clip it along nice and fast. When I get up my hill up here, I get more traffic. I, uh, maintain my speed well enough that I can roll right up things. One of my favorite YouTube channels is a guy named Doug DeMuro. Um, Doug does kind of the car equivalent of what I do with tractors. Um, and one of his kind of catchphrases is quirks and features. Um, one of the best quirks in this tractor is the fact that your left hand and right hand door latches are different. Um, again, economy tractor, and I think somebody might have looked at this and said, hey, we can save 10 bucks by using this other type of door latch over here on the right hand side. And choose to do that. Now, you don't usually get out that side of the tractor, right? Your motor valve is in the way. You shouldn't really be climbing out the right hand door generally. But uh, the latch over there is different. Now, it'll open just the same. You can get right out if you want to, but you won't be able to open the door from the outside of the cab because there is no exterior latch. It will only work here from the inside. Across my console up here, um, it's a really modern back that layout. It looks like a modern piece of equipment. Um, it has a lot of the same buttons that you would find on other tractors. So you have an electronic throttle that's right up here on the dash. The electronic ones are nice. You don't, they don't tend to walk around like some of the mechanical ones do. Uh, and only four buttons. One for the horn, which sounds pretty pathetic. Uh, you've got a button here to be able to run the PTO while the tractor's parked and you're out of it. you got to watch on some tractors. If you want to run things like a rear generator or a rear chipper, a lot of them, depending on the safety switches, won't allow the tractor to operate the PTO when you're not in the seat. By depressing this button, you can override that seat safety switch and run the PTO with yourself off the tractor. So there's a button to do that on the dash. And then the two buttons that operate the emission system. A tractor like this, you don't really have to do anything or worry about it, other than if it goes into regen, it's good to let it finish. The one button here is inhibit. It'll stop the tractor from blowing into regen if you're headed back into the garage and it wants to. And the other one is a forced park regen that by and large, you should never have to use. But if for some reason you bypassed it enough and you want the tractor to run manually, you simply press that button. Over here on the right hand side, I've got work lights, buttons for my cab work lights over here on the pillar. And they've moved the button now for the PTO over here to the side. So I can turn that to turn it on. And then when I want to turn it off, I just pop it. And that'll turn the PTO on and off. So some of these in the past have been kind of back here behind the operator. This is really conveniently up to your side. My loader stick, 
right here on the side. If I had an armrest, I would really like that. The throw of the lever here is a little bit longer than what, say, a Grand L series tractor is. Those have the controls up here on an arc, kind of on a console up on the side. Being that this is a little bit more economy-oriented series, you have a little bit more basic control layout, so your loader stick is a little bit longer, so the throw of it is long compared to that series. Still is fairly typical like Kubota-esque control here where things like multiple functions are oddly easy compared to a lot of other tractors or here. Um, that works just fine. I did notice that the price of the valving for this loader is a little bit less expensive than some of the other tractors are, but I can't tell any performance difference here by operating it. As far as the rest of the tractor goes, uh, HVAC controls are up here at the top. It's the same controls and everything that all the other Kubota tractors use. Pretty easy. Uh, back window opens. Pretty simply, quarter windows do not. They're fixed shut. Uh, you have cab air filters and stuff up here at the top. The radio is pre-wired, so there is no radio in here stock. We saw an inexpensive one for 89 bucks, so don't leave that thing empty for no reason. Better ones you can put in there too if you want something a little bit more fancy and high end. Uh, but the antenna and the speakers and everything are up here. So it's sometimes you make some funny choices sometimes. Why you would like leave all the bits up here for the radio but skip the armrest sometimes. So that's a little bit on the new 2020 Kubota MX series tractors. For us here in our dealership, we probably will see about two thirds of our sales or so swing up towards this cab model. Really excited to have that in our product lineup now. If you're going through the buying process for a tractor or if you have a piece of equipment that you have any parts or service needs for, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com. Sun is down like right in my face. Oh, no. <laughs> Sit here and squint the whole time. You know in the last video, like the most popular comment was the condition of the roof? Buy more tractors so I can fix the roof. <laughs>